So good morning, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to today's Q Exchange Partner Webinar with Gopi Mattel, CEO of Sellerstone Inc. My name is Diane Gutierrez. I'm the marketing coordinator here at Sellerstone. So just some house rules before we get started. We'll be placing everyone but the speakers on mute so that we can reduce the background noise. And um, this is a uh, recorded webinar, so the recording will be sent to you within a week. Just sit back and relax. Don't worry about taking down any notes. And uh, finally, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, any time at all, simply type them into the chat box and Gopi will answer them during the Q&A towards the end of the webinar. Okay, so without further ado, here's our speaker for today, Gopi Mattel. Hi everyone, thanks for being here today. Uh, I uh, recognize a lot of uh, names that I've worked with in the past. Many, many different products in the past, and this is this is one of our successful. Can you hear me still? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, one of our many products here changed that's been in the marketplace for now near on to 10 years. Uh, we've largely used it for our customers in our commissions business, sales commission business, but it's also a completely independent product, and we're going to present that and how partners and customers can take advantage of it. So I'm going to try and keep the uh, presentation to about 40 minutes total, even though we have an hour. Uh, definitely, you know, write up uh, your questions so that I can answer them uh, throughout the session. Uh, or at the end of the session. So to start off, uh, Sellerstone, that is the company that produces the QXchange product. We've been in business since 2000. Um, so at this, uh, we've also been funded by Lighter Capital of Seattle. So we've, we've been around for quite a bit of time. Um, and uh, we are today more than 90 staff around the world. Um, I, I hope this uh, notification would go away, but... Um, um, so uh, we have about 90 staff around the globe in different locations. I am here in uh, San Mateo in California, that's our headquarters. But as you can see, we have offices in the Philippines and India and so on. Uh, what that allows us to do is to provide our partners and our customers customer service uh, 24 hours of the day during the work week. So um, almost any time when you contact us via phone or email, uh, we are there, somebody's always there trying to answer your question. So it's a pretty strong support system for you. Um, today, our, our particular subject is data integration. And as partners, uh, what are the things uh, that matter for data integration? So the way we look at it is that, and we see this ourselves as vendors, uh, when we go engage with a customer uh, and we provide our solution, Invariably, they already have existing systems. And invariably, one of the questions is, how is it going to work with my Salesforce.com or my QuickBooks or my Sugar CRM or my MS Dynamics Great Plains? Or So that's a big concern, especially uh, uh, people that are like a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, if they bring in their IT group, for example, that becomes really their fundamental question. So it's, it's, a, it's a constant question that has to be answered. Uh, if you're doing a new project, you also have the necessity, if you're implementing a new system, to convert history. They may have it in existing systems. They may be going from one accounting system to another, or one CRM to another. The data has to be brought from the old system into the new system, which tends to be an extremely painful process, as you can imagine. You know, people start writing reports and creating uh, text files and Excel files and uh, having a royal mess of it. And many projects fail in that process because it just is unanticipated work a lot of times. Once you have done that, then you also now have to make sure the integration between an existing system and the new systems work well day after day. So that's the day-to-day -day integration. This is also another problem you have to solve. I mean, it doesn't matter what you do. You, if you do an accounting system, they ask you, like, okay, well, I have my new deals being done in uh, Salesforce. How am I going to make sure that it shows up as sales orders? 
or they will say, well, you know, I, you know, whenever I, you know, my accounting uh, uh, system changes the customer address, I want to make sure my salespeople can see the customer address correctly for their orders. So this becomes a continuous uh, challenge. And finally, anytime you have two different systems, uh, due to due to either the systems uh, or due to historical issues, you have a lot of data quality that you have to correct. So these are challenges you face as a partner. And what what is the benefit of solving these problems as part of your offer? Uh, the, you increase the confidence of the customer in your solution. When you say, yeah, yeah, I understand, I can take care of it, I can make sure that data data will show up, suddenly your confidence is transmitted, they're more likely to go with you for the proposal than some other competitor. You also can solve the problem faster because we have seen this. When projects get delayed, even if it is due to the customer's uh, problems, even if it is because of their fault, they still lose patience at some point and the projects fail. Okay, so we constantly try to reduce the calendar time taken for the project even though the billing time may be the same. So solve the problems faster. You can charge more and make more margin because your actual work, if you use a tool, is actually less. And finally, if you're the one who knows these problems, you have a solution already in place, and you are competing with others, you have a competitive advantage. So this is the reason why I think it makes sense to have a data integration product in your quiver of, of solutions on day one when you talk to your customers. Um, so we have had success with uh, partners using QExchange to solve their uh, customers' uh, solutions. Uh, I have uh, one of our partners that has worked with, with us for a couple of years now uh, uh, from Status Hub, Anthony Bello, uh, who is a salesforce.com consulting firm with a lot of expertise in that area, and uh, um, Diane, if you can unmute Anthony. Anthony, I invite you to uh, kind of give us a little bit of your uh, uh, experience with uh, QExchange and Sellerstone, if you can. Please announce yourself. Uh, can, you, can you hear me now? Yes. Echo, that should be a little better. Can you yes, still hear me? a lot me? better, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Uh, so, hi everyone. Uh, my name's Anthony, and uh, I run a small Salesforce consulting shop out of New England. And uh, I personally have experience in probably um, four to five hundred implementations of Salesforce.com. And uh, of those, I would say probably fifty or sixty of them involved an integration between QuickBooks and Salesforce, which is most of the customers that we work with because we're on the small business side. So uh, I've used many uh, data integration products specifically with regards to integrating QuickBooks to Salesforce, including the one that was originally owned by Intuit at one point in time, as well as one that became Dell Boomi uh, at one point in time, um, and a, a few other uh, different applications that you could find on the App Exchange. And it seems like, I don't know, every day or so, there's a new, a new tool out there to be able to integrate uh, different systems back and forth. Um, there's a few things that I like the most about uh, QExchange and how it's been able to kind of help me help my customers do what they're looking to do. Um, one is that uh, there's no kind of predefined integration. It doesn't just say, okay, well, you're going to need all of these fields to go to all of these fields. It just basically gives you an out-of-the-box tool that allows you to build the actual data integration itself. Um, in order to be able to solve some of the issues for my customers, I needed access to more than just your standard basic objects inside of QuickBooks, um, more than just the customer, more than just the invoice. I needed to be able to link things together. I needed to be able to create sales orders. And I needed to be able to do all of that without having to write code. Um, and that's and that's kind of the biggest the biggest benefit of having a tool like QExchange is that we can make all of that happen without needing to understand the databases that we're integrating into all in that great of detail and without having to actually write custom applications to do so. Um, so we've been able to do things like have invoices automatically generated from Salesforce inside of QuickBooks through QExchange and then have those invoices get updated back to Salesforce, do all of our accounts 
receive our accounts receivable directly out of Salesforce, use all the nice workflow rules and email alerts and the ability to track activities inside of Salesforce. And then QuickBooks just became a second thought for many of the customers. It simply just was the tool that created their profit and loss statement, and that was about it. And all of that was capable just because of the fact that we were able to really kind of uniquely define the exact integration as we needed to be, including using custom fields that exist inside of QuickBooks, which most of the other tools just don't offer. Um, we also have the ability to basically access all the data out of QuickBooks. So if you're trying to do something like make a mass update to some of that QuickBooks data, it can be a pretty simple task if you have the ability to use a tool like QExchange to do so, whereas Intuit themselves don't really provide those facilities to be able to kind of make those updates. Um, so that's that's how we've been able to be successful with QExchange when it comes to our clients, um, and hopefully they stick around and keep doing what they're doing. So much. Thank you so much for 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 giving us your insight, and uh, we're so happy that you're a partner. We've had a great experience with you, and I hope that you always find me as uh, incredibly good at uh, supporting you. So, so as you can see, uh, that's one of the solution sets we have supported, but the, uh, QuickBooks and Salesforce.com are not the only ones. We have integrated already and partnered with many different vendors. The partnering thing, there's one thing to integrate, like, you know, integrating Excel or, or uh, SQL Server is one thing, but partnering means a lot of times we actually have to go through the vendor's uh, own tests, security and the performance tests. For example, you cannot get into a certification without going through their testing. So we actually do the extra work and become solid partners of many of these uh, products and vendors. And uh, you can see Microsoft Dynamics, AX, which is a high-end ERP system, Great Plains, NetSuite, uh, we have Sage uh, Intact and Sage Peachtree and various other versions of Sage. All the, practically all the versions of Intuit QuickBooks, desktop, Premier, Enterprise, QuickBooks Online, everything connected, Sugar CRM, various variants of Sugar CRM, Salesforce.com, uh, Microsoft Dynamics, uh, Oracle Fusion, etc. Now, some of these, interestingly, when you think about it, it's not just Salesforce.com. We use their API to connect with Salesforce.com, but that means every one of the 3,000 plus applications that are running on the Salesforce.com platform can now be integrated. So we actually get to the underlying platform and there all of the applications. So you have tremendous ability with what we do, okay? Plus all the standard file formats like Excel, CSV, ODBC connections to databases, et cetera. Okay, so it's pretty solid. Uh, here's an architectural diagram of how, it, how our system works. Use uh, DAP is a data access plugin. It is a either a source or target uh, application or data format. You can see we have many extra ones here that are listed. And uh, we are very open to adding brand new uh, connections. As soon as the customer says, I want to connect directly, we go find their API and we connect pretty quickly. Okay, within a, within a few weeks, we can connect a brand new uh, application. And then we have a rule set called a profile that's created for each and every combination for a particular customer. We'll say, oh, Salesforce data goes to QuickBooks or uh, ODBC data goes to Salesforce, whatever it is. And the date, the, uh, the, the profile is saved. Uh, it is scheduled for particular times, and then it is run, it extracts data, it modifies the data, and then it loads it into the target site. That's really how the uh, QExchange application works. Okay? Now, um, a few key features I want to cover before we do some demos. So you can see uh, we really designed it to be extremely simple. So uh, even though there are uh, many ETL tools out there, most of them require sophisticated abilities to configure, but we try to bring it down to a business analyst who may know uh, Microsoft Access, their level of expertise. So you can see here that there are really three steps. First step is you connect to a DAP uh, and you pick one of them, and then it immediately gives you the entire database. 
all the tables, all the fields. If the API allows us to get to custom tables, custom fields, bring all of that in for you. And then on the second step, you say, where is this data going? Likewise, that database or that application schema is presented. Okay. Once it's presented, you can map any of the fields to any of the fields. You can, the system will actually authenticate if they, the API normal will have security, will actually connect using your user ID password, make sure you're authenticated, only you get to access your data. And then once it's verified, uh, you can actually see the data before you run any processes. For example, you could see an example here of source data. We can actually filter. We can add filtering rules like I only want data from this state or this, uh, uh, this city, et cetera, and then only those records can be brought in. And, and depending on the API, we can actually put in SQL com 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 commands as well. So if you use ADB, ODBC, not only a table, but it can actually put a SQL statement to bring in data for you. And then the data can be mapped field by field, as you can see here. And you can not only map the data, you can also put in, like, you can see some expressions, which I'll talk about later. You can decide that you're in inserting brand new records. You can decide that you update, you're updating existing records. Or you can decide that you want to try both. You try to insert. If it's already there, you update. So those kind of options are made very simple because those are very common operations. So we try to make it really, really easy for you. And then we give you a little bit more functionality, which is very powerful. We simply allow each and every one of those fields to be modified or transformed using functions that are similar to Excel functions. We can do date-time conversions. You can check for some values. You can do math. You are, and we can also create custom functions. So occasionally, where, you know, the, a, a partner will say, I need this thing. For example, we had a situation where they wanted to create a proper name. That is, first name with a capital, capital initial, middle initial with a period after it, last name with a capital, you know, com concatenated together and give me one name. So that's a very unusual thing. We actually created a custom function. We included it into the application. So we can actually add more expressions to it, okay? And uh, once you have this, you save it, you can schedule it to run automatically, okay? So you can say, you know, particular days, every one hour, whatever it is, you can schedule it. It can just run automatically for you. Our uh, QExchange application talks to both online uh, uh, applications like Salesforce as well as on-premises applications like QuickBooks Desktop. Depending on the situation, we can be fully online or we can also be on-premises. So either is possible currently with a QExchange. So let me jump over and give you a quick demo of how this looks like in actual operation. We're going to move data from QuickBooks to Salesforce. And this is just like a one and a half minute uh, demonstration. So you can see a, a quick, clear idea of how this would work. Okay, so we're running this. It's actually a minute and a half. So you, we're, we're going to go ahead. We're logging in into QExchange, the online version. You can see a lot of profiles being saved here. There's one for Q, uh, QB customers to Salesforce accounts. So we'll, we're looking at this right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're popped over to QuickBooks. You can see QuickBooks in the top left. This is a customer table. You can see some records online. So we're actually in QuickBooks right now. Okay, uh, QuickBooks Online, that is. Okay, we're looking at this record, Amy's Bird Sanctuary. So there's some data here. And, of course, as I said, custom fields are also mappable and convertible if the API allows us, okay? So here we're actually authenticating our security. So, uh, so it's actually secure, and that's, what, that's why the partnership with the vendor makes sense because you want to make sure everything is secure, okay? So we verified it, and then now we are going to connect to the target. In this case, it's uh, salesforce.com, okay? So we'll go take a look at, we're gonna run it. So as I said, it's a very simple stuff, one, two, three kind of process. And uh, so now we are in Salesforce, and you can see the Amy's Bird Sanctuary record. 
Okay. So that's pretty much all it is to map a table over. I'm obviously it's a simple example, but you can see really the steps that involved are very, very straightforward and simple. Okay, so that's how easy, but you can also see how flexible, as Anthony mentioned, we're not requiring you to do X or Y. Uh, some applications will say, oh, an opportunity in uh, uh, Quick uh, Salesforce can only go to uh, a, uh, a uh, sales order in QuickBooks, okay? But in our case, you can take an opportunity in Salesforce and you can put it in sales order, you can put it in estimate, you can put it in invoice, you can put it in sales receipt, you can put it in payment history, you can put it in anything, okay? So there's no restriction on which table has to map to what or which field has to map to what. Everything is free for you to map yourself. Complete flexibility. So let me show you. I know we've been focused on the examples that have been about Salesforce and QuickBooks. And this is uh, it's meaningful because QuickBooks has more than 5 million customers around the world. Salesforce has more than a couple of hundred thousand customers around the world much larger customers with a lot, of, a lot more money. The, the, the important thing is that by, by being able to connect to that, you get more customers as your base to work with, okay? If you're building a brand new product, uh, having QExchange embedded into your solution suddenly makes your application work with this incredible install base, okay? That means that you can immediately have a channel of customers that say, oh, this application is a brand new application I already trust because it already works with Salesforce, already works with QuickBooks, which I'm using. So it really adds to your business to use QExchange. So um, here we're going to talk about like a completely non-QuickBooks, non-Salesforce.com uh, uh, example. We are going to map a PDF file to a SQL Server database in our application. Now, a lot of people will do Excel, they'll do CSV, they'll do ODBC, but hardly any application, any ETL in the world will do PDF integration, okay? So I'm gonna show you how we can actually map a PDF integration as well uh, to, to any database. So here, this is a demo of PDF. Um, so we're opening a PDF file. Okay, this example is a report you're getting from, let's say, your insurance carrier or some vendor of yours. You may be a reseller and the manufacturer is sending you a file. You're getting all this data, your sales, and you want to bring it into QuickBooks or Salesforce. How do you do that? It's a file. It's like, you know, it's not, you know that you can't really access it. How do you do that? So you, we can take this, okay, a PDF file such as this. There's only a few records we care about. The rest of it is junk. How do I bring it in? So we will, just like the previous example, we will, we will create a QExchange profile. But when I mentioned a SQL Server, QCommission is running on SQL Server, so we have our own API, but it's basically just touching SQL Server in this case. So you can see it's uh, opening up the entire schema of the QCommission database. And it doesn't have to be QCommission, it could have been Salesforce or QuickBooks too. Okay, so once that connected, uh, we can go in and see all the databases and tables here. On the left side, you see what happened? It actually accessed the PDF file, and it can figure out what the data is, okay? So it, it, you can tell the system, this is where the data is. So it's actually gotten only the four valid records out of the entire PDF file, okay? And that PDF file, now we are running it, and you see that it's four. So it actually processed it. It was able to extract only the four records it cared about. Okay, this is a sophisticated integration capability. See, that's those four records, the only, the only ones that came in. This is not available in most ATL tools. Okay, and you may run into customers that have these kind of issues. Okay, so now you can see in QCommission, we have the actual data come through from from the file. We were able to skip the bulk of the uh, lines and only pick up the data that we wanted. So those kind of rules can be configured in our system and integrated. Okay, so that's another example. Another really uh, 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 good uh, uh, function that, again, most application, most ETL tools don't give you is this idea of error recycle. As I mentioned, you may have many data quality issues or you may need to change data as you migrate 
you want to you want to be able to say I want good data, especially if you're getting data from Excel. As you know, a column can have both a date and a number, and that could cause problems. So how do you verify errors and correct them? Okay. So here is Q Exchange. Now we are going to configure it to correct for errors. It's going to identify errors. So we're going to first get a Excel file, okay, and then we're going to map it, and it has a number of records, and it, it has data, but it has a lot of errors. So we're going to find these errors in the file as we bring it in, okay? So once it's provided, we want to map it. We're going to – there's nothing there right now. We are going to set up some rules. We're going to say, when I see certain data, okay, go ahead and set up some checks. So in the case of transaction, I want it to be required, and so on. Okay, so every every field or every column can have its own different set of tests. You know, all all of the column that data has to be date and time, or the amount has to be numeric, or or a field has to be only a certain number of characters. So you can check for all of these, okay? And then you can run it. And, and so the system now has identified all the problems and it'll actually tell you what the errors are. But not only that, it creates a staging table. If you had 10,000 records and four records are erroneous, only the four records will be in the staging table called the error recycle table. And instead of you going back and reprocessing the entire 10,000 records, you can simply correct the four erroneous records and then reprocess, okay? Sometimes the error is not in the incoming file. You forgot to put in the master record in your target site. So you just have to correct the master record and just reprocess, only the erroneous record. So it saves you enormous amounts of time, uh, and sometimes you can't even change the source data. So that's a powerful feature that our tool offers you as well, okay? I, I'm sure... Anthony's kind of excited to see these features fully. Um, so let's see. So, so those are some of the key things. Now I want to move on to some quick use cases. You know, we saw QuickBooks to Salesforce. Uh, you, can, uh, you can also take Salesforce leads to Excel or other databases. We, can, we, are starting, we, we are connected to Magento, an e-commerce system. We can take uh, uh, new orders from the e-commerce system and load it into your accounting system as invoices. We can take PDF files and create, as you saw. We, we can do all the dApps, all the applications can are interchangeable, right? You can move any data to any data. So why, what is, what is the price, price point? And this has changed very recently. Um, so we have um, a number of, sorry, number of editions. So QExchange Regular, which comes like the very basic application, which I'll show you what it is, uh, is at $330 first year subscription, okay? It's basically every year. And QExchange Pro is $990, Premier is $2970, Enterprise is $4455. And, it, you know, depending on the kind of solution uh, area you're playing in, you want a, enough of a price point so that as a partner you can make enough money. That's sort of the uh, rationale behind it. So... The price points, the, the functional ability of these applications are here uh, directly in our website. So you can see regular, for example. You can have all the text files and various other things in here. You can see Pro has QuickBooks uh, editions and various other accounting applications, okay, including Salesforce, okay, and ODBC and so on. And you can see Premier has got like higher level applications like Intact and uh, Microsoft Dynamics AX and so on and so forth, okay? So you can look it up later so you know what to charge your customers for it and you get your uh, revenue from that as well. Um, we have basically three types of uh, partnerships. You can simply just refer a deal to us and say, hey, you know, this deal, they, want, they need an integration tool, go ahead. And if you have that kind of call a referral partnership, you get 15% of the first year subscription, whatever that is. If you're a consultant, you are actually engaged with a customer. You have maybe selling them other services. You simply bring us in and recommend us as the sole 
solution for integration, and you get 25% of the first year subscription. And then finally, at VAR, you actually sell our product, you provide your own services, you may mark up our product. In that case, you get 35% up to $25,000 a year, 50% more than $25,000 a year in first year subscription, okay? And then you can also mark up the pricing if you want and get a larger percentage of that. Services you provide, if we bill for you, we keep 5%. If you bill yourself, you keep all of it. This is simply the, the, uh, the revenue you're able to make. So you know, you know the pricing, you know the partnership number, so you hopefully this is a substantial revenue opportunity for you and also gives you more customers, okay? That's really our, our thought process. And part of the engagement, if you're a new VAR, we'll give you a full training on the product for a couple of hours. Uh, the first project for a new VAR we will do so that we can train you on how to do it. Subsequently, you will do it. And then we're doing a monthly training webinar on key features of the applications, like kind of like a little bit of what we did today, as well as any new feature. Well, there'll be a website list, a listing for you in our website. So we, as you know, uh, as you heard, you know, we, we really want to make sure that you succeed, you make a lot of money. By, by you succeeding, we succeed. That's our philosophy here. So that's really uh, uh, the bulk of uh, QExchange. I want to mention a few other things. Even though QExchange is important to us, QExchange came out of our sales commission business. Sales commission needs to work with both accounting and CRM systems, okay? So Q commission is our bulk of our revenue, bulk of our product. If you're at all working with any company that has salespeople, selling Q commission or recommending Q commission to them to calculate the commissions, and by the way, neither Salesforce nor QuickBooks or nor Microsoft Dynamics Great Plains or nor Microsoft Dynamics CRM have sales commission. We are a great solution for your customers. The revenue is much higher there. We recommend that you look at that as part of your partnership. We have just released our own CRM applications. A lot of the smaller businesses don't use CRM or they find like some of the solutions too expensive. We, we are pricing it pretty low. So in case somebody needs it, we're not really pushing it, but it's available. And then finally, we have our own platform as a service, similar to salesforce.com, called force.com. You can build complete applications on it. It's incredibly inexpensive. It's open source, so it can be on-premises as a private cloud. So there's another solution we have in the marketplace. So we have a lot of really good, solid products in the marketplace as well. So I know I've been kind of rushing to keep the time low, but, uh, of course, we'll share the recording with you. But this time is now for you guys, so hopefully you have a few questions for me and I can answer it, but you can also contact any of us, uh, uh, you know, through these phone numbers, through this email, but I am happy to uh, answer any questions that have come up, or you can keep asking, please. Just type it into the chat box uh, if you have. Did I lose all of you guys? <laughs> okay, can you go into more detail uh, about the value-added reseller program? Okay, so basically our product is available to you. So uh, we, you, you bring it in, you know, you, you have a version of a copy of the product, you can start testing, demonstrating, etc. And then uh, we write the order, and then we give you the uh, the portion of the revenue I mentioned earlier. I'll go back to that page for a second. Uh, so uh, you, you'll write, you'll say like, "Hey, this customer wants it. We'll write an order. Like, let's say it's two thousand five hundred dollars, and uh, you're under twenty five thousand dollars total revenue that you brought us. We'll give you thirty five percent off it, which may be about a thousand dollars on that." And you probably are working with them to integrate their solution. So you may be billing it separately, most likely. So that's all your revenue, so we don't touch that. But if you say, hey, I am, I am the VAR, I want to represent you here, but I don't have people to actually do the integration, or I'll do the integration, but you can you do one order, one billing, we can do that. We'll just keep 5% uh, out of it. Um, and if you're doing a number of customers, 
you are doing your own marketing and you're bringing in a lot, you start growing about just 25,000 a year, we will split the revenue of the first year subscription with you 50-50, okay? So again, ex using example of 2,500, you may get 1250 out of it, but you may say, I'm going to actually charge a customer $4,000, so that's a markup, so it's another $1,500. We'll give you half of that if it's under 25000 total for the year, or 75% if it's more than 25000 for the year and markup uh, revenue. So that's really how it works. Uh, these are all, it's flexible. You can do the services. Uh, you can ask us to bill for you. We can do the services. This is all possible. Uh, but we do this extra where, you know, in the first customer, we, we show you how we do this. We, we, we do the services for you. You're kind of supervising the project, um, uh, et cetera. So the, okay, so let me go back. There are two options for services, okay? You can build the services yourself. We will have nothing to do with it. You do the services, you build yourself, no problem. Okay, you keep 100%, we, have, we don't even need to see it, okay? Occasionally, a VAR will say, I'm managing this project, but I want everything on your paper. You do, I don't want to bother the customer with two sets of bills and confuse them. You bill everything, even for my services, okay? In that case, you will just tell us how much to bill, we will bill the customer, and we'll keep 5% for administrative administration, and return the, return the rest of the services to you. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so that's pretty much how that part works. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, and of course, we'll, we'll have time later on if you need uh, to have more detailed conversation. I'm happy to have private conversations with anybody, anyone. You can just reach me directly using that email. Um, so only the first project we help, because the first project always is, uh, I, I will send a, for whoever wants, I will send a full contract uh, and a pre uh, detail on exactly how the WAR program works. So yes, Ferris, I'll, I'll send that to you. Diane, can you take a note for me, please? Um, sure. uh, so yeah, so, so we'll definitely pass that information on to you. Um, the very first project, we want to partner with you. We'll probably split the work with you to make sure you may be the front, we may be the back end to help you solve the customer. We want you to see how we do work, how we bill, et cetera, and then subsequently, we're hoping that you are doing the services. We don't really want to do services in the long run. We'd rather you do the services and keep all the revenue, okay? Uh, we do do an extra training. Uh, Obviously, for the other two types of partnerships, these are, you know, you, we, you're just pitching us and we're doing all the selling and closing and services. But for VAR alone, we'll give you extra training, okay? And then we'll keep you up to date. But as Anthony can probably vouch, you can contact us at any time and ask us for help, ask us for, like, new dApps, ask us for anything, and we will, we will help you with that, okay? All right, other questions? Yeah, I'll, I'll send you all of those uh, links and uh, uh, and uh, uh, contracts and so on on the VAR, Ferris. Um, other questions, please? Thank you, Anthony. Anthony says that support has been great on all the projects I've worked on. This is really, really important to us. I think fundamentally we believe even though the product is good and gives you a lot of options, you just want to have somebody you can just have a fallback and say, hey, listen, I have a problem I need to get solved. and and um, and we can handle any uh, 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 you know any kind of requirement. It's not just about integration. You simply come and say, "I have this major systems problem. I don't have resources. I need something built. It's all custom, uh, etc." And can you help me with that? We will absolutely help you with that. We do a lot of uh, projects. We help startups start. Uh, we have accelerators. So we will absolutely solve any kind of technology problem you can come up with. In virtual reality, augmented reality, we don't care. We will help you solve that. Um, so a uh, question about volume of data. So QX pretty much can, you know, there's really no e inherent limit 
in QX on data. Uh, but a lot of times the APIs can be quite slow. Uh, for example, if you connect to QuickBooks, QuickBooks will use it will, 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 it has an API, it'll go in, it has a relational database structure, which is a modified relational structure in certain situations. It pulls the data out, then it converts to XML, okay? And then it gives the XML to us. We have to take the XML, then we have to reconvert it back to relational data to move it into other applications. So there's a lot of conversion going on, so it could be because, not just because of us, but because of the API, things can be slow. So we have to kind of, pay attention to like what is going to happen with the API. So I couldn't tell you that everything is going to happen immediately. Um, the, it's not continuous real-time today uh, for a real-time question. It can be scheduled as often as you need. It can be scheduled every five minutes or every 15 minutes, but it's not like a, a polling drip type integration today. We are working on it. We expect to have full real-time continuous integration as well. We have a message queue that's in the back end that's being added, zero MQ. So you will have continuous poll and in a continuous update data in the future, but not today, not real time today, but as close as even five minutes perhaps. One other question. Um, so license revenue commission is only for first year or recurring. Uh, the commission is only for first year subscription. Okay, we try to give up a large uh, commission in the first year. It's only for first year commissions, uh, first year revenues, okay? QX could translate non-English languages to meaningful data. Um, you know, we haven't tested uh, what happens with the non-English. We don't translate anything. We will not translate Spanish data into English, et cetera, today. But there may be a question of, are the, the data, the numbers, and if it's like kanji or something, does it, properly convert. I don't have an answer for that uh, today. Let me go and check it out with our dev team and see what happens in the case of different data uh, format. You know, um, I forget even the term, terminology for that, but we'll, we'll check it out. Uh, overall, uh, we are uh, actually uh, trying to, uh, at least one of our other applications, uh, Easy Commission uh, is one of our applications. We are converting it to Spanish today. So we do expect to do languages in the future, uh, but not today, uh, not, not a supported feature yet. Um, Sam's question, can QX auto sync between two sources? So I'm going to assume that that means, uh, can I take a QuickBooks file and put it into another QuickBooks file? Yes, you can do that. You can actually uh, move data from one instance into another instance of Salesforce or QuickBooks and so on. And that helps you upgrade solutions or that helps you move data between a dev or quality version to a production version, et cetera, okay? And um, so VAR agreement, yes, we do have a VAR agreement, I'll send it. And yes, we do have, we give you, if you're a VAR uh, uh, or even a consulting partner, we'll give you a full functioning version of the system that's not for resale. So we will definitely give that to you so you can start working with it. And But we will want to train you first so you're not wasting a lot of time in the learning curve. Okay? Yes, we do do that. So um, uh, very exciting. Thanks for, um, um, yes, uh, QXchange supports Salesforce Lightning. Uh, the, the, the system, we provide both the... I, I, I don't know about whether the cloud is fully available for a trial. The on-premises version is fully available for trial, but the on-premises version will connect to cloud applications like Salesforce or Microsoft Dynamics CRM or QuickBooks Online and so on, okay? So you can actually run it at the customer on-premises or you can have a hosted uh, server or we can host it for you. And so it can be on a hosted server and it can talk to QuickBooks desktop at the customer side and a Salesforce instance in the cloud at the same time, okay? Yes. Um, so 30 plus applications and data formats today. We are continuing to add new things. For example, we are working on Shopify today. We will add any application data format that you want added. It, like I said, it takes us about a month. We just need a valid customer. If you have a customer, there's some revenue on the table, 
it's no problem at all for us to try and add it as long as the application supports some kind of an API or allows us to access the database. Okay. Very good. Lots of good questions. Thank you so much. I'm excited to partner with you guys. I'm excited to give this solution to you guys so that you can make a lot more revenue. I think this is a good addition to your solution set, and I think we are a good company to work with. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll see that definitely uh, when you work with us. So I will wrap up now. Thank you so much for all your time. Our email ID and phone numbers are here. Please shoot us an email. There's a whole team that gets this email, so somebody will always respond to you. I appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Sellerstone team, if you can stay on for a bit, I would appreciate it. Anthony.